Okay, in this section, we're going to describe what a uh, what a population pyramid is and why it's used and how I'm going to use it in my particular argument. Okay, a population population pyramids and the demographic transition model. A population pyramid, a graph that shows the population of a country according to sex and cohort. These graphs can help predict future population trends. A cohort, an age group made up of five years used in describing a population pyramid. An expansive population, countries with a high birth rate, but a rapidly declining death rate. Stationary population pyramids. Countries where both birth and death rates are low. We're going to show you what those are. Demographic transition model. A graph outlining a country's natural increase as a, revert, as a result of birth and death rates. Therefore showing changes in population as a result of a country's economic development. The model is based on the changing population of Western Europe during in the in, during industrialization. So this is going to give us a, an overview of idea of how uh, the Industrial Revolution changed uh, how a population looked and the components of a population, not only pre-industrial, but over the different phases of our modern era. Okay, this is the basic components of a population pyramid. Of course, we have pink for the girls and we have blue for the guys. Okay, each stair step or block of a population pyramid represents um, five years in a population. Like the bottom one naturally is from birth to four years and so on and so forth. Those are called the cohorts. You can see how the age ascends upward as a cohort. Each side going from the center outward is it can be either the percentage or the number of people in, 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 in each particular segment. So from zero, this is zero. The zero point goes, goes out to the left. It shows you the number of men and from zero to right it shows you the number of women in in each particular cohort this is an example of a population pyramid this particular example is a pre-industrial population pyramid this is a fair example of what life was like for pretty much most of the agricultural age this is a fair indication of what a pre-industrial population pyramid looks like as you can see the, the this particular uh, population pyramid goes into the number of people could be in millions it could be in thousands um, this depends on what the chart says but like I said from from the center outward it shows you a number these are the particular cohorts zero to five five to nine you can see ascending into the later ages of a population we're going to look at a bunch of these as part of our examination into what populations look like okay this is the demographic cycle according to Carol Quigley what you see as far as a population pyramid and the demographic transition follows this um, this particular uh, chart almost to a T like you say in in the uh, who what he calls a primitive society or the pre-industrial society birth rates are high death rates are also high and the numbers are stable and the with the age distribution to mostly people young below the age of 18 years old which would contend or uh, which would contend or which would agree with what we saw in the previous section when we're talking about 
an, an average lifespan. Here in, in the next section is what he calls the child bearing or the arms bearing cohort or the uh, um, phase of a demographic cycle in a country. We, we call that, you know, they call that the transition phase. Birth rate is high. Death rate is falling. The numbers the, or the population are rising. And most of your your population is between the ages eight, uh, working ages of 18 and 45, which is the prime adult years. This is the this is the, the completed industrial cycle. And remember these numbers that quickly came up with are, are 1960 or in the 60s. This is pre our modern era. So these numbers have actually started to ch have actually changed. And I call this to restabilize. In other words, after you go through your transition phase and you complete it, you can com complete your industrial phase. You're, this is what you look like. You should look like your birth rates falling. This is what we've seen that your death rate is very low. And your numbers are staying stable because now your birth rate and your uh, death rate match again. And this is the geriatric or the declining phase. This is the what they call the post industrial phase. You see a lot of this in Western Europe now. Your birth rate is low. Your death rate is rising, not because of illness, but because a lot of your people are dying of naturally of old age they're getting older so when you have a lot of old people dying and there's not enough people to replace them you get what you, you get a falling population you get a population contraction and here are the modern four demographic transition phases now a lot you know there is there's a there's a, there's these are the show the main four phases and there is a fifth phase that we will investigate in a later section that is uh right now what they call uh theory because there's not enough evidence to prove that it is true just yet because it hasn't been around long enough but these are the four demographic transition cycles you have the pre-industrial. Like you said, like like in Quigley's chart, you have a high birth rate. You have a, a rapid fall in um, each upward age, uh, age group due to high death rates. And you have a short life expectancy, which is something that agrees with the other section that we talked the other previous charts about a low life expectancy in a pre-industrial society you have a transitional phase where a country is just starting to industrialize we now call these countries developing countries you can see how the triangle smooths the triangle smooths out on both sides because your birth rate is still high because of modern sanitation in food and whatnot you have a fall in death rate and you have more people living into middle age and a slightly longer life expectancy we're going to prove this not just through history but through uh, current demographics something that we can actually look at outside of our industrial model that we see in, in the west okay the stationary model which we call I call the restabilization you got you have you know, the the fully industrial model you have declining birth rate you have a, a low death rate people a lot of people living into old age and this is what they called the zero population growth phase where the there are enough uh, 
births to replace the low death rate at the top. In our fourth phase, which we call the post-industrial, the contraction phase, where you have a low death rate, low birth, a very low birth rate, and a low death rate, and higher dependency ratio, and where life expectancy, a longer, a much longer life expectancy, for a greater and greater number of people. But the thing is, you don't have, you know, it's unstable because you don't have enough births at the bottom to replace the people that are dying. And in our next in our next section, we're going to go into these four and even the fifth demographic transition model. And we're going to use um, population pyramids to um, examine this.